and give me a when you go to one okay awesome as soon as i start talking then you can go ahead and switch on over to me hey everybody thanks for joining us here for another live stream on the metal roofing academy if you'd be so kind as we get started here why don't you throw us a like and hit subscribe if you hadn't done so yet it really helps out our channel and with us once again is our very special guest it's our ceo and founder rob haddock rob how you doing today I am just fine as frog's hair, Patrick. <laughs> have you ever seen frog's hair? You know, it's probably so fine that I haven't really noticed it. Maybe I've not looked close enough. <laughs> there you go. I'm just good and getting better. I'm just busy as a one-armed paper hanger. I know you've had quite the travels lately, so thank you for taking the time to stop by and join us. We really appreciate it. I always enjoy these little visits with you, Patrick, and you always make me nervous with these live <laughs> ones because we can't go back and fix something if I misspeak. So. The multiple cameras and lights and everything uh, aimed at us doesn't, yeah, doesn't it, just put you it, at ease? Yeah, no, yeah, <laughs> right. Sure it does. <laughs> well, let's talk about something that might put you at ease. Let's talk a little bit about S5. Last time we talked about our first decade, 1992 to 2002, and we talked a lot about some of the obstacles we encountered, some of the challenges we had with getting the product into the market. But let's focus on decade two now. We're going to talk about 2002 to 2012. Uh, we've overcome some of our obstacles. We're moving into the market now. So tell me, how did this uh, next decade go? I know that we were looking for new applications for our product. We were with snow guards a lot. That's kind of what got us into the market. But you even put out a bounty looking for new uses of S5 clamps. So tell us, did you end up finding any other uses? What did you end up discovering? What other products did we create this decade? Right. Well, first of all, our audience is probably, and I forgot to say hi to our audience. So hi to all of you out there. Good to be with you again as well. And uh, you forgot to warn them that this was such a busy decade that we got notes. We had to put some notes together just so we don't miss anything. <laughs> so we got, I got, I got, we got our cheat sheets here to make exactly. sure we, we get everything in. But as far as that bounty poster, I remember that, that that was early in that, very early in that decade. And um, it, I, I did this ad like a, like a West, an old yeah, Western, sure. you know, <laughs> wanted poster for other utility type applications yeah. of S5. And I did that primarily because I wanted to garner photography. We were ready to crack into other markets. For sure, yeah. Because um, up to that time, we'd really primarily been in snow retention. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I always knew that there was more to S5 than snow retention. So. Yeah. So anyway, and, and I had customers tell me personally, you know, hey, I used your clamps to do this or that <laughs> or whatever else. And, um, and that, so, I, so I thought, okay, what I need now to market this is some photography of other interesting installations. Exactly. Yeah. You know? and, and so, and it was a total flop. Um, you know, people, <laughs> people, <laughs> people don't enter award contests because they think they don't have a chance of winning. Yeah, no confidence. You know? in and there was like to win. several thousand dollars at stake on this deal. Come on, guys. And, and we weren't getting any entries. But anyway, <laughs> it, it was kind of a flop. Um, we, we did have a winner in the end. We, we had two or three entries and, and we had a winner and he, he walked away with several thousand dollars. And I know it was all in nickels. It or was at least, all yeah. in nickels because it says five. five, so it was Absolutely. five cents. <laughs> Um, yeah, I bet he was happy about that. Yeah. Anyway, um, you know, so that's so that's that's where that thing was. Um, but coming back to the point that we we knew, I knew from the beginning that I had invented something bigger than snow retention, yeah. but I also knew that that was the most obvious market for it. So Absolutely. that was the market that I hit first. It. If you will, it was the low-hanging fruit. Sure, right. And you had and personal stake in that anyway, so it made sense and stuff to jump off into that. But obviously, it had so much holding strength and everything, and it's a versatility. It's a simple attachment, so why wouldn't more be able to go into that? Well, right. And people attach a lot of other things to metal roofs Ain't other than truth? snow retention. Yeah. And um, you know, but those trades are are harder to reach, and it was actually a, a pretty steep uphill climb like everything for, had been so far with us <laughs> well <laughs> right <getting> started <laughs> but to get people to realize hey this is good for things other than just snow guards absolutely um 
and part of the reason that we, we almost sort of shot ourselves in the foot. Um, I did. I claim credit for that. I almost <laughs> shot myself in the foot because um, our snow retention applications were, were such a blow away success Absolutely. that the market in general just recognized us as a snow guard device. Sure. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And they and they a lot of the of our customers out there sort of pigeonholed us into oh S five is a snow guard company. You kind of get typecast all of a sudden that it's like that's all they do. Yeah. The, 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 exactly. The, the case closed. And you know, I mean, that was so so prevalent prevalent, such a big factor yeah. that even today we're in our we're in our fourth decade now right <laughs> entering true. our fourth decade yeah. and even now today i get people that ask hey rob they know i travel a lot and, they, and you know yeah. hey where are you you know what are what are you doing lately where are you nowadays sure. <laughs> you know and i'll tell them um well you know we're we're in the middle east we're in australia we're in south america central oh. america the caribbean the, <laughs> and they'll look at me like i'm crazy <laughs> you know like and then say i didn't know it snowed in all those places <laughs> and so yeah they don't there are so many other applications of s5 to, to, to my earlier point that <laughs> um but there are still our brand image is so strong in the area of snow retention that, that the we still have a lot of s5 users that think that that's all we do <laughs> need to expand their outlook a little bit more <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah and absolutely. that was the big challenge of our second decade really sure yeah. was to enter into those other applications success really you know in a certain sector especially which we, we were so focused on at that first decade really sets the tone for a lot of people and stuff and that's success is a good you know thing in that direction but you know convincing people to think outside of the box that we had drawn is something that takes a little bit of work you know once again you know we, we'd persevered so much just to get our clamps into the in, into the market that it was just like whoa wait 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 we got a few other things <laughs> right <laughs> stay open to us yeah right and people appreciated i mean there weren't any really good solutions there were solutions on the market for snow sure. retention yeah there were about three companies at that time okay. three yeah. or maybe four um that had some kind of snow guard devices on the market but sure. none of them worked very well and and so uh yeah well there's there's that and and mm -hmm. i think i i with my eyes open i i kind of sort of knew that we had to really sure make a broader impression but the other trades outside the metal building and metal construction industry mm -hmm. were harder to reach sure because yeah. things like Niche. sign protection or, or uh, mounting signage on exactly. roofs yeah. mounting light fixtures on roofs mounting service walkways on roofs or 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 communications equipment yeah. or all those kind of things absolutely those were little niche markets There's you know that the metal them. construction industry really wasn't it wasn't their problem exactly you know what I mean? yeah and, and so each one of those individual applications re represented a trade and those Absolutely. trades were harder for us to reach but yeah because i know even like with with wind reinforcement our clamps were already so good they held on so well that with a standing seam profile some of those in extreme wind zones would have the tendency that if they weren't protected to encounter blow-offs completely just up and stuff and that just really does damage to a metal roof having to re-roof after a catastrophic blow-off is terrible but already with the way our clamps held on they prevented a lot of that so it became a no-brainer i'm sure kind of going into that direction well well, let me let me get there in just a minute. Sure. But I, I got some bullet point notes, By you know, means. about um, you know about markers, as I would yeah. call them, in that second sure. decade. And the first one, and one of the biggest ones, was that um, my my children, who were by that decade yep. all reaching adulthood or in adulthood, um, and one by one, they kind of came back. <laughs> to S5 they yeah, they, did, they wanted nothing to do with with <laughs> with S5 you know when they they aspired to bigger and better things yeah. and went off to 
<laughs> college and whatever they did, and one by one they sort of trickled back over time. You know what? Maybe I want more S5 in my life. <laughs> yeah, and within Good. that second decade, all three of my adult children yeah. were involved in, in the company business, and that's significant to me because it was, you know, it was rewarding. You you like to have that family thing going Absolutely. on. Absolutely. Um, well, they grew it, up with it too, like you talked about last time. They did. That's just why like... they wanted to get away from it. <laughs> exactly. Because they were packing boxes and doing that kind of stuff. There's there are pictures of, of my of my two boys, you know, loading a truck with S5 boxes Put in the back of a pickup truck when they were, you know, like yay high. And, uh, and you know, they'd had enough. They didn't want anything to do with it. Uh, you know, but when they came back, it really blew, blew some new energy into the business. Sure, and some absolutely. New wind in, into my own sales personally. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, so that was, was really a, a, a spark that kind of ignited that second it's decade. It's a great catalyst having that much excitement kind of coming back in, centered around the family. I'm sure that kind of really gets the gears moving. It really did. That's awesome. It really did. And it, and it blew new perspective in, and it was just a really cool thing to happen. That's great. But coming back to your earlier point, about wind resistance, um, I invented uh, applications of S5 technologies oh. to improve the wind resistance of metal roofing sure. yeah. in the previous decade. Sure, okay. Yeah, and but it never really did catch on. It never gotcha. got a lot of traction huh, yeah. until the second decade. <laughs> and that's when wind applications uh, really began to gain yeah. steam. Um, stand, and I'm speaking now strictly to standing seam roofs because yep. when, a, when a standing seam roof fails under wind, just imagine um, the wind pulls up the center of the panel. Yes. So yeah. my hands representing uh, a seam here. Yeah. And the wind pulls up on these adjacent panels, and as it does, it pries apart the bottom kind of that of billows seam, up the panels and almost. it unwinds yeah. the the standing seam and the roof. Let's it causes go. a mess. So our basic technology was clamping that seam together, yep. and, and our original you know applications sure. were it, it clamped onto there because it was a convenient yep. place to grab. Creating that mechanical connection, and then you, that seam. Yeah, and then you could attach things to that clamp. Absolutely. So in this application, you're not attaching anything to that clamp. You're just using that clamp, clamp to hold itself. that seam together. Absolutely. Prevent it from jacking itself apart and unwinding yeah. and letting and letting go of the roof. And and in many cases, it increases the wind uplift performance of standing seam roofs by two and three X. By a significant amount. And, I mean, crazy. Right. <laughs> and there are other ways that companies can do that. Sure. But they cost a lot. And Compared S5, to an S5 clamp? S5 wind clamps were, <laughs> were, the, were the cat's meow. Absolutely. Um, because they cost right next to nothing. Yeah and improve the wind uplift performance of the roof that, the, that much. The ease of installation is incredible. Nothing when it comes to, to it. That. What you're going to get out of that for, for strength against wind uplift, eh, there's, no, there's no beating it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So another marker in that decade, other than um, you know the wind wind reinforcement mm -hmm. applications, was the fall protection industry. Oh yeah, sure. Now yeah. the fall protection industry really started in England back in the late part of the preceding decade. Okay, interesting. But it was really starting to catch on. What happened in England is they passed some legislation that says if some poor bloke falls off your roof <laughs> and you didn't have a way to prevent that up there available to yeah. him you're going to jail oh well that gives some incentive for a very long time and this was <laughs> imposed on building owners which meant also building designers of and course. architects anyway yeah. it all started in england but it spread throughout the rest of the world from England during our wow. decade two. They're the precursor. And, yeah. and this was one of those beautiful applications where um, we didn't have to find those guys. They found us. That's what you like to hear. It was, <laughs> it, and they found us because they were looking for a good and prudent way to attach to standing seam metal roofs primarily. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, without penetration and so on and so forth. Exactly. And and we were kind of the only show in town, really. <laughs> yeah. And so by then, you know, internet was pretty functional, exactly. and you could do searches. Search and out. You, and and so that industry really found us. That's great. And. Um, you know, through that second decade, we became the global standard, really, for attaching static 
fall protection lifelines and systems to yeah. standing seam metal roofs and that, that that was that was really kind of a global thing well to be able to do that and adhere to the law without having to go through into the structure cause leak points cause problems where you're going to worry about your weatherproof barrier on a metal roof i'm sure people who had found some solutions are maybe like yeah all you got to do is go through your your, your standing seam panel not a big deal right uh, unfortunately it, it's pretty much a you know a golden rule of do not penetrate your standing seam panels well so to have something to hold on and not do any damage and be simple to install i mean that had to be the absolute just golden ticket for them to find that was part of the golden ticket sure. but the real gold in the ticket was that that holding capacity had to be documented I mean, uh, there were all kinds of European and global standards sure. involved with the, because we're in a life safety application now. You gotta prove it. You've gotta, you've gotta be able to prove it. And because mm. we had done the, the, the prodigious amount of, of <laughs> testing, you know, Most load definitely. testing and publishing all that yeah. stuff and so on, you know, that's why we were the cat's meow to that particular industry because Jeez. we had done all that diligence yeah. and had all that stuff available to them and that 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 was the real key that fa that fastidiousness we had for testing and, and and double checking and triple checking and making sure everything that we were saying that these things were capable of could be backed up was a huge boon to us at that point obviously like that's amazing and it got to really put them at ease the people who are looking for these solutions to know that it's like we don't have to do our own testing it's all off our plate we can submit this to the government and know that it's safe i mean that's when some like that comes down i know that for some businesses it could really upend stuff so to have something that can put your mind at ease and know that this is the solution that you can use and it's not going to take any extra money out of the bank i mean that's got to be an amazing thing for them yeah it, it was Incredible. it was just right for yeah. for that niche so the the next thing was like everything else sure you know every other kind of if it wasn't a life safety which by the way patrick you know snow retention is a life safety it absolutely application is. as well You're right but it's not governed as much as fall sure. protection is yep. so um but then there's everything else yeah. you know well i got signage <laughs> i want to mount on my roof i got you know some Myriad. rooftop lighting i've got yeah. some um some uh, uh monitoring equipment satellite some HVAC dishes equipment, all that stuff <laughs> exactly um and and those were the more difficult markets to reach yeah um but we did that through that decade and we continue to it's it's an ongoing kind of thing absolutely yeah um and but in conjunction with all that a lot of those applications are lighter duty applications exactly than yeah, life true. safety absolutely stuff. and so um, that's when we came up with the S5 Mini. You know. Um, and it's not actually an S5 Mini. This is an S5V Mini. Sure, yeah. And this is an S5S S Mini. S there, yeah. So for each one of our standing seam clamps, yep. we developed a lighter duty, less expensive part. Absolutely. And now you can, you can go and fit any standing seam roof we still load test these things. exactly yeah just as just as thorough with testing anything we do with those but it doesn't need to be as strong as you know some fall protection or snow retention thing yeah absolutely. and so it's a less expensive lighter duty kind of uh, kind of application that is good for so many of those utilitarian absolutely um, kinds kinds of applications signage and then, doesn't need the same holding strength that a snow bar will in most cases it doesn't <laughs> um and and attaching walkways and stuff like that yeah, yeah. and so we, you know i wanted to get a clamp out there on the market that a guy could buy for three bucks exactly yeah right? and so a, a, a mini he could buy for three or four bucks sure. depending on his quantity and it was useful for all those other kinds of applications like you said especially with walkways well i mean we, we what do we have that that eventually almost every walkway company in north america were using our mini clamps i mean that's a it's a huge thing for any upkeep o and m and everything that you're going to be doing on a metal roof nice to know that you've got an easy way to mount those things so you can kind of come and go as you please right and walkway systems um you know they had their own there were a few major brands sure. that had their own little unique ways to 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 try to attach to a standing seam yeah, roof yeah. Without, without penetration 
um, but they didn't work so well. Uh, most of them jacked the seam apart Ugh. rather than holding it together. Exactly. Yep. And it, it took a while to crack that, but eventually, and within that decade, yep. um, we won every major walkway manufacturer in, in really in North America. That's incredible. Over to standardizing their walkway <laughs> attachment with S5 products. So that was, you know, that was another big win for us. Really big way to provide an easier way for people to do it. Doing it the right way, perhaps even. Exactly. So the A better clients. way than they were doing it. And <laughs> yeah. So the more, the more right way. Yes, exactly. Yes, <laughs> totally. <laughs> so with those mini clamps, then, like you said, with lighter duty applications, things that are not standing, you know, like uh, with, with snow retention, I mean, in, in higher snow load areas, you're really going to need to hold a lot. But like you said, with utilities, we can get by with minis. But that also opened up a new uh, uh, zone of our where we could uh, market these mini clamps to. And that was PV. That was, you know, solar became a big thing where it's like, those are light panels. There's not a lot to go to them. That became an easy way to, to do that. So tell us a little bit about the PV industry. What came to light with that industry with this decade too? Sure. Well, the you know, the, the solar photovoltaic or PV yep. industry really got uh, it's its start. It really got its start clear back in the 1950s. Sure. Okay, yeah. But no one could afford PV then. <laughs> yes. Um, but in in a practical sense, it, it really came to light um, at the very end of our first decade. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, more consumer based and everything. Easier access. More affordable panels. But it really it really caught a good trade wind and, <laughs> and started good really timing. growing through the, our second decade. Absolutely, yeah, sure. And so um, once again, this was one of those niche markets, you know, um, yeah. solar applications, technicians and engineers and so on, are, they're very techie people. Sure. And they're yeah. all over Google and whatever, <laughs> they, you know, they, this was another market niche that where they found us. That's incredible. More wow. than we found them. <laughs> again. <laughs> um, because once again, we had the degree of testing and, yeah. and, uh, you know, to your point, uh, solar modules are pretty lightweight yeah. as far as loads in the downward direction. Sure. But yeah. as far as wind loads that are trying to suck them off the roof. Once the again, up, that uplift. <laughs> the, that's an engineered application. <laughs> Absolutely. And so uh, again, all the, all the testing that we had done and all the certifications yeah. and so on uh, lent itself very well to those applications because any, any, any competent engineer you want assurance. Could do the math yep. and, and <laughs> knows that this is going to work. He's not, you know, Absolutely. it's not a guess. It, it, yeah. It's calculable. So hard for third parties to be able to accurately guess and make a, a accurate guesstimate uh, if you haven't provided them with the numbers to know that they can fall back on. So that was another, once again, uh, another huge advantage to us taking such careful testing, you know, on, on all of our products. So that had to be putting a lot of people's mind at ease. Right. <laughs> So to go a step further, I mean, when, when, when we started getting involved with solar PV installations yeah. um, and we saw the convention of that trade, mm -hmm. uh, which was to amount a lineal, a continuous lineal extruded aluminum rail. Sure, yeah. And then mount the modules onto that rail. Of course, yeah. Right? Traditional way that people were used to at that time. Yes, yeah. It was it was the only way it was done. Really. That's what people just knew. Yeah. But when I got on my friend, and we mount a lot of rails that Absolutely, way. Absolutely, and, and for sure. No, so, no diss to rails at all. No, no, no offense to rails. Rails are great. But when I was on my first couple of solar jobs, where our products were being used, yeah. You know, I thought. Gosh, you guys are, in essence, you're putting rails on top of rails that already exist exactly in the metal roof. Standing seam exposed fastened roofs, all of them have rails they have, integrated into them. Right, I and mean, they're already bought and paid for. <laughs> exactly. There they are. Yeah. Um, why are you putting rails on top of rails? And so, to me, that just didn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. And um, <laughs> so later in our second decade, um, Dustin and I invented yep. what we call direct attach, and it's it's just 
some simple hardware yeah. that mounts the module directly to the rails that are already in the roof, Absolutely. the seams or the ribs, as the case present. may be. Yeah. And, um, and, and that was a hit. And yeah. we're, we're in our, our second generation, and we, you know, we redesigned that. We all, we're always redesigning everything you know, and making it better. And <laughs> we're a continuous it, improvement company. We that, can't help it. It's what we do. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> but anyway, so that was, that was a big deal in, in, in the latter part of our, our second sure. decade. Okay, gotcha. Um, and, and moving into our third and, and from here forward. And as I said, we've kind of reinvented it a little bit and improved it quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so solar has become, you know, a very important part of our business and, yeah, and, and, and lends to our expansion in other For areas sure. of the world where there, where, the, where it doesn't snow. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, like you said, it, it, I mean, so much of our stuff is about saving weight in our products alone. Because so much things that you would use for applications like snow guards or for adding any utilities to a roof is like, they become big and cumbersome. And that's adding a lot of roof, like weight to the roof. And I mean, then whatever you're adding on top of that, that adds up. Well, and the, some places just can't handle it. Yeah, to piggyback on that, Patrick, the using our direct attach methods yeah. with with our PV kit mm -hmm. saves 85% it's a huge the weight of rails. I mean uh, <laughs> the dead load as well as all the shipping costs and all of that stuff. Yes, yes. It's only 10% the volume of rails as you far as shipping and, in and every logistics way. and all of that and it's even lower cost. So I know we've even said uh, before, I've seen comparison photos of a 250 kilowatt system uh, of rail is going to be on a flatbed. It's going to have to on go a on a semi. semi trailer. I mean, that's okay. That's already going to add up enough. And then that comparison to a direct attach is going to be thrown in the back of a pickup truck. Yeah. I mean, easily <laughs> a no with brainer. a lot of room to spare. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> you got room for your cooler, for your seats and everything else you need. It's, I mean, it is really a no brainer when it comes to that and stuff. I mean, shipping alone, logistics these days, the cost of shipping from some places ends up becoming a huge factor in a solar system. When you're installing anything, wherever you can cut those costs is a huge thing. So, I mean, that's got to be a huge, like a huge advantage to anyone who's looking at that and thinking, Maybe there's a better way we can do it. It is, and we're proving that to the world a little at a time. That's yeah. fantastic. Uh, that, yeah. So it seems like uh, that the bounty may have been a flop, but developing new products in 2002 to 2012 certainly wasn't a flop. We found a lot of things regardless and stuff. I'm, I'm glad we had a winner of it and stuff, and though we may not have had a lot of submittance to that, uh, we certainly did okay. We found a lot of different uses for it. So in the light of that, during this decade, you also saw the untapped potential of a lot of different growing uh, roofing markets, metal roofing markets around the globe. A lot of people were loving, uh, you know, metal roofs, but there was a lot of uses for them and a lot of things that they weren't aware of themselves. So you were traveling, you were getting out there to educate people and really illuminate them of what S5 could do for their roof. So tell me, uh, through all of your travels, what were some of your favorite places that you visited? Um, what were some memorable, mo memorable moments? Tell us a little bit about your travels during that decade. Well, uh, pre-pandemic, Patrick, sure. I, we, <laughs> a different era. <laughs> yeah, we 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 went to uh, a lot of places, yeah. um, including uh, the UK, Germany, Ireland, Holland, Austria, Switzerland, Spain, Poland, Russia. I'm reading from my notes now. It's so. going to be easier this way. <laughs> <laughs> Singapore, South Africa, and and so on. Yeah, um, I was traveling. Uh, over 200,000 miles a year, air, air miles a year. All right. <laughs> um, more, like, more like 250, actually. Um, and and I, I needed two passports because there weren't <laughs> enough pages in one. In one. All right. <laughs> so, so we indeed went to a lot of places Seems with like S5. It. And, and um, uh, so I did a lot of traveling, introduced <laughs> S5 to a lot of different places in yeah. the world. And I, I didn't even mention Central and South America and the Caribbean, yeah, Australia, New over. Zealand, you know, <laughs> all those, all those places. Yeah. Um, there, with regard to the rest of your question um, about, you know, memories and, and all that kind of stuff, 
um, special memories and special places. Well, they're all kind of special, but I'm, if, if you had to nail me down and say, you know, what is your, where is your favorite place? Sure. It's up the road here about eight miles <laughs> at, at my home. Well, that's good. <laughs> it, all right. That's, that's a, my favorite that's place to be. That's my <laughs> sanctuary. And I, and I love being home, but I love to travel too. Sure. And of course, yeah. I get people that ask me all the time, you know, where is, where is the favorite place? The favorite place you've ever been, the most <laughs> memorable or whatever. And um, and that's not the answer they're looking that's for. They're, <laughs> you know, they're looking oh. for something outside home. <laughs> and uh, and 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 that's a that is really a difficult one uh, for me to answer I would imagine it's a bit hard to choose one. I've been it is. <laughs> I've been to so many beautiful places. Yeah. Um, I <laughs> I've seen sunsets over the South China Sea. Absolutely. I've seen the same sunsets over the Pacific coast of South Australia, the Nile River in Uganda. Not nothing, okay. The, the Alps in Bavaria <laughs> and right. Switzerland and Austria. <laughs> um, the harbors and archipelagos of Sweden and the fjords of Norway. Um, I've seen a lot of beautiful sights and a lot of beautiful places and I've yeah. met lots and lots of beautiful people. I love meeting new people and sharing experiences with them and developing personal relationships yes. with, with our customers and our, you know, our channel partners and so on. Yeah. And so there's so many places that I have that are favorites <laughs> to me, but all yes. kind of for different reasons. You know, no, one sure. is the topography, <laughs> one is some special dinner I had with a customer yeah, or something. One is the 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 fauna or flora and one yes. is the sunsets, you as know. As wide and, so, and varied as possible. <laughs> so yeah. So there's so many different reasons and they're all favorites. I they, would have been, yeah. They're all favorites. Oh God, that's great. All types of latitudes and longitudes that you've hit up over the years for certain. So, okay, so we won't, we won't try hit on one because obviously everything's great. You, you've been so many places, it's really hard to, to narrow down. So, so let's talk a little bit about more about the growth that we did during this decade because we didn't just grow our product portfolio, we also grew our company and that's internally. So I know that we uh, had to, obviously it started with a very small staff, but we had to start growing it outside of the family. How did you decide what positions, what areas of the company, what areas of focus you needed to focus on when you were hiring outside of the company for the first time? Well, um, the second decade was was definitely one of those growth those decades, big. and yeah. and and um, but I, but I'm a big believer in stick to your core competence. Sure. Yeah. And my core competence personally was metal construction and metal roofing specifically, sure. and. I don't. Some of our audience may or may not know that I was uh, that I also wear two hats, and 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 I'm a forensic consultant. To Your experience that industry. with so, metal roofing certainly predates S5. <laughs> right, yes. and so I've part. been on lots of roofs, and I know metal roofs, and yeah. I know metal roof technology, Absolutely. and I can teach that to to my to to my next generation, yeah. and I can teach that to other people, and so on, and so you know, pretty much had that covered. Good, yeah. And and I also had developed um, and originated test protocols for sure. for testing the holding strength of, yeah. of of our products, and so you know, a lot of that technical stuff um, we had down pat, we had covered. Absolutely. Everything else. I mean, when it comes to manufacturing, when yeah. it comes to commercializing, which sure. involves sales and marketing and and PR and you it's know no all those thing. other things, yeah. um, I knew very little about those things. <laughs> sure, yeah. And so what we did um, in our second generation, we mm -hmm. of course we hired salespeople. Sure, good and, start. And hoped we were hiring good ones, <laughs> and, yes. and in man, many cases we did. Absolutely. Um, but all that other stuff I outsourced. So I yep. outsourced our manufacturing from, from day one sure. through Europe. the second decade. Yep. I outsourced manufacturing, I outsourced marketing for the most part, okay. um, advertising and, and all, all those other back-end kinds yep. of functions. And so we, we were a very lean company 
But we had a lot of outsourced providers. Of course, yeah. And having outsourced providers, we learned over time, um, you know, was difficult. Of course. <laughs> I can imagine sometimes that the, those people who are out on the fringes don't quite get all the intricacies of our company. It's hard to really get them in tune with all of us. Exactly. Yep. And, you know, manufacturing was a key one. Of course, and especially for us developing products and especially things like this. I mean, to know that your quality control, things are consistent, a lot of that, I mean, that had to be difficult. It was problematic. And up up until and up through most of all of really the second decade so yeah. the first 20 years of our yeah. business i outsourced all our manufacturing Jeez. so oh. we designed parts and you know and we handed part designs to yeah. out, other sources to to manufacture those mm -hmm. products and throughout that 20 year period we we had learned a lot about manufacturing sure. we'd yeah. learned a lot about you know all that all those processes and all that stuff um, and we had also learned who was good and who was good at it and who wasn't so good at it. I would it. imagine it becomes clear pretty quickly. <laughs> and we had a volume in, in our products that, you know, we didn't want all our eggs in one basket as far as manufacturing was concerned. So long story short, we, we were using five different outsourced manufacturing companies yeah. to, to manufacture us five goods. And they were all some of the best in the country. Great, yeah. But it wasn't great. <laughs> and we weren't satisfied with, um, you know, so many different aspects of manufacturing. Um, lead times, quality controls was a huge yeah, one. Quality controls got to be huge, yeah. It was it was huge, and it and it always will be huge. And we could never get the quality consistency. Um, from any of those oh, guys, that's so difficult I mean, at they, that point. they all, they all screwed up and, yeah. and I mean, I'm, I'm forgiving, <laughs> you know, we screw up once in a while, uh, okay? everyone's but, fallible, yeah. but, but those, human. but those screw ups were beyond our control. And, and I was it. finding myself apologizing so many times to our customers, Ugh. not because we really screwed up, because, but yeah. because one of our outsourcing, outsourced Out of our hands. Vendors At that did. point, what are you going to do? We and, do our diligence, but it can only go so far. Right. And so at the close of our second decade, yeah. um, Harry Carner came to me with a proposition. Okay. And Harry Carner was a guy who had worked for a couple of these outsourced oh, sure. companies. A lot of familiarity then. And he'd been making S5 parts almost since the very beginning. <laughs> All right. um, and, he, and he and I developed, a, you know, a close personal relationship great, over yeah. time. And, and he said, Rob, he said, you should be manufacturing your own parts mm. in your own facility. There you and go. With your own, and I and I said, well, <laughs> he said, you you know, you have the 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 volume. You're 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 selling and making enough parts that it yeah. just makes sense. And I said, well, true, but but Harry, I you know, I have always believed in sticking to my core competence. You're right, absolutely. And um, manufacturing isn't it. I don't know manufacturing. Yeah. And he said, well, Rob, I do. Yeah, yeah. He's been <laughs> he's, he's has got intimate knowledge with us five parts at that point in manufacturing. That's awesome. And so he proposed that we throw in together and um, open our own manufacturing facility, right. which would which would then give us complete control over. All so many of the, the, the quality issues that we had yeah, experienced over exactly. time with outsourcing. And, and, and moreover, every aspect of manufacturing. And one of Harry's yes. frustrations was, you know, that he never had the right equipment sure. that was best to manufacture S5 parts. That's got to be difficult and for so someone like him. <laughs> Harry and I, on a handshake, entered in to the third decade all right and this was 2011 now okay that, sure that, yep that this closing it out this handshake deal came together <laughs> um at the close of the second decade yeah and so i won't get into too much of we i'll save more some of that time. for next yeah, time but to, but to make you know to to to, to kind of abbreviate that we finally had control 
yeah. um, over our manufacturing, over every quality aspect uh, of what we do, over every production aspect, and we're free uh, to put the state-of-the-art equipment in there for specifically the manufacturing yes. of, of the goods that we sell. Exactly. Um, and, and so in addition to that, um, we began to bring other functions that we had been outsourcing yeah, yeah. in-house for some of the same reasons. That's great. And we, you know, we found that um, we didn't really do it to save money. Sure. <laughs> um, we did it so that we could exert our own level of competency on all these other functions. It's a huge and thing. Like so, you said, you had five different manufacturers at one point taking care of stuff. I mean, there's just going to be an inherent amount of, of fluctuation between what one person puts out versus another. It's got to be a really difficult thing to all of a sudden bring that all into one umbrella. It's just got to be so great because for as much as we have looked in on to make sure that we know the numbers on everything that we produce suddenly now to bring that all into one thing. It's got to put a lot of you know ease on you to know, all right, we can monitor these things well now. We can do it like we've been wanting to do. Exactly, it's exactly. Amazing. And while it was a little bit scary, you know, <laughs> sure. to have that many more employees, yeah. um, it, it, it is also really stress relieving in some ways, you for know, that sure. we don't have to apologize <laughs> yeah. for a mistake somebody else made. Exactly. That doesn't mean to say that we won't make some mistakes. They're rare, but, yep. you know, sure. once in a while we screw up. But um, but we own it. Yep. Yeah. I mean, and, and we owned it even before, even though we didn't commit the error. Whatever, sure. But you know, well, now so. we can know. We've got our own monitoring on it. And, and we, stuff, can, so we fix can be it. more accurate. And we can yeah. fix it. Absolutely. So you talk about growth then at that point. I mean, this thing seems like a great time to kind of start saying, I mean, what did we learn this decade? Because we did a lot of growing, but growth is only a good thing if it's done wisely and sustainably. If you try to go too fast, all of a sudden, oh, well, you're, you're losing people, you're, you're losing you know, a vision on some of it and stuff. So tell me a little bit about what you feel your takeaways were from this decade. I mean, what, what did you take out of it and stuff? Now that we've gotten through the perseverance that was required from our first decade, we're hitting the market, we're hitting new ideas and stuff. What did you, what are some of your takeaways? Well, you have it written right there on, the, you know? on your shirt below our logo, the it's right, the right way. way. You know, I've, I've always, the, you know, what has always motivated me is to do things the right way. Absolutely. And, you know, as I, in the conversation we just had, I, what frustrated me so much with the outsourcing that we did and yep. other things that wasn't done the right way, the very exactly. basis of, of, of the inventions of S5 and, and all of that is having to do with attaching things to roofs the yes. right way. <laughs> and so the right way is, is not just a motto that's printed on your shirt. It's, it's, not an it's empty my phrase. personal ethos yes. and our company ethos mm -hmm. that we will do things the right way. Yep. And what does right way mean? Um, it means that we'll do everything we do with competence, and integrity yep and that's just the right way to do business and that's the way i've always done business and that's the way s5 will always do business that even goes beyond that really with the tested trusted and engineered i mean we just try to be able to back up and see that's the nicest thing is just to know it's not empty promises everything we do is backed up with numbers with tests with you know with, with with the diligence that we've put into to know that they can rely on us that's that patrick that's all part of integrity yep. and competence is you stand behind your claims mm -hmm. you prove your claims and you document all that stuff and, and you know and and without those certifiable proofs yep you're blowing smoke. Doesn't mean a whole lot. Yeah, that's kind of empty wording right there. And I know for sure too, especially with the case of Sean and Dustin, I mean, especially they've worked on roofs. We ourselves are present on roofs. You and your whole history of that has been present on roofs. We're not people who are unacquainted with being up there, with knowing what contractors deal with, with knowing what installers' problems they're trying to overtake. It makes it a big thing for us to know that we've been there in the trenches and are just trying our best to just make things easier on people. Not only make it easier, 
and more trusted and also less expensive. It seems like we've hit a lot of a, a lot of points that a lot of people are looking for when they're trying to mount to metal roofs. Amen to all that. <laughs> um, and as you know, I've spent five decades now in in the trenches of the metal construction Absolutely. industry, and metal roofing is 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 you know where I landed and what I yeah. know <laughs> the best. And I have always stuck to my core competence. Yeah. And you know, but I have also sought outside myself and and others currently in the organization. Yeah. You know, when we do need some new, like I did with Harry, I mean, Harry Carner knows more about aluminum and metal <laughs> sure. in general, Absolutely. manufacturing and processing, and I don't have to know it. I, you know, I'm okay with saying <laughs> I don't know enough about that. Yes. I want to find some son of a gun who, who else knows know everything about it. <laughs> exactly. And so we hire competent people. And that's so all part about. of the competence thing. And we put it all together and here we are. <laughs> that's great to hear. Well, you know what? I feel like that's a great way to end our live stream today. I think we've covered a lot in our second decade. We've even got a lot more to come in our third decade. And that's coming up. So stay tuned to our channel to find out when that comes. So Rob, let's toast to that and stuff. I think we've hit uh, a lot of ground on this time around. Cheers and thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate getting to go over all these milestones and everything like that. I mean, it's getting huge and I can only imagine we're gonna need more notes come our third decade. We will, and <laughs> uh, here's to us, but here's to our, our users and our customers and our listeners too, because they're the ones who have really made us, I mean, we work hard, but they make us successful in the end and that's, that's the reward right. of doing what we do and we appreciate you guys out there and thanks for joining us today we wouldn't be here without all you guys and you know what if you're still here and joining us well you know what why don't you throw us a like and a subscribe to our channel because you know what youtube algorithms that sure helps us out a whole lot and stuff and we'd appreciate any help we can get and you know what we're going to be back with another live stream soon so please stay tuned and catch more we can't wait for you to join us for another live stream so guess what guys we're going to leave you for now We'll see you again soon. God bless you all. See you guys. Take care. Thank you, Rob. That was amazing. That was so great.